Hey everyone, I'm James Otter of Otter Surfboards, where we design and make wooden surfboards here in our workshop in Cornwall. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we build up the rail of our surfboards. And in order to do that, I need to turn this into these. With all of our wooden surfboards, we start off by gluing a frame onto a bottom skin, and then we use these rail strips to run from the tail all the way to the nose. To show you how we build up the rail strips of our surfboards, I've got one of our cross-section ribs here, which I'm gonna draw out on the chalkboard in a second. But we need to cut pieces of wood to fit a certain profile that we can build up around the rail of our surfboard to give us a solid wooden rail on the outside of our boards. So for each rib, it gets stuck onto our bottom skin here. So this is our bottom skin. And we need to fit, first of all, two square profile pieces into here. Then we're gonna fit another profile piece that's got a round over on the top, or what we call a bead. And then all subsequent rail strips are gonna have this profile cut into them. So they've got a bead on the top and a cove on the bottom. And we're gonna build those, nesting them one on top of the, the other, so it can follow around the side of the surfboard and bring us up to where our deck needs to sit. All of our rail strips are made out of either Western Red Cedar or Poplar, which we buy directly from the sawmills here in the Southwest. To make rail strips, we really want some nice straight grain and some nice tight grain running along the length of the plank so that as we profile them down into those thin members and we bend them and twist them, we don't get too many that break. So I'm gonna have a shuffle through the stack and find some with those characteristics. I pulled out the three that I'm gonna to process today. So I'm gonna get them in the workshop and get on the machines. So now I've brought those planks inside the workshop, the first thing I need to do is put a clean surface on the wide face of them for us to work from. To do that, I'm gonna use our thicknesser. Now I've put a nice clean surface on those planks. I'm going to now put a nice sharp edge on the underside, on the short face, um, so that when we line them up on the bandsaw, they can sit nice and square in against all the fences. To do that, I'm going to go over our planer here um, with the guide to follow. Now I've got three planks with a nice clean face and a nice clean edge, it's time to get them through the bandsaw. Our rail strips finish at 6mm thick, so I'm going to rough cut them to about 8mm to give me a little bit of tolerance. Now we've cut our planks into two and we've got them at about eight millimetres thick off the bandsaw. You'll notice that to bring them down to six millimetres thick, we want them to have a really nice finish. And with the cedar that we use, it's quite open grain, so it tears a little bit on the planar thicknesser. So we end up with this kind of funny texture on one side. And then where we've cut it on the bandsaw on the other side, we've also got the texture left over from the saw. So we're gonna send them through our drum sander, just the machine behind me, so that we can get both sides really nice and smooth, and then we'll move on to the table saw. Thank you. 
Now that I'm finished with the drum sander, I'm ready to start table sawing these down into the thin strips that we need. And if you remember, the first two strips that are going to go on each rail need to be square, and they finish at eight millimeters by eight millimeters. So I left one of our planks thicker, that is sanded to eight millimeters, where the rest are all sanded to six millimeters. So I'm going to cut four pieces off of this that I can then get um, kind of right down to eight millimeters square around on the drum sander again. So I'm just going to cut four of those off and then I can get into table sawing the stack of these. Um, the table saw we've got is a, a little Festool kind of sight table saw, which is perfect for us. Um, it's quite lightweight, but it's ideal for these thin strips. I've set it at the minute to nine millimeters to cut these oversized ready for the sander. Um, so I'm going to get into it. So now I've cut those first four square strips. I've cut them on the table saw, like I say, kind of uh, to around nine and a half, ten millimeters wide, and that's so that I can then chuck them onto the drum sander to get them exactly eight millimeters by eight millimeters um, square. And in order to just double check that my measurements are all correct, I'm going to use some veneer calipers, which are a great way to accurately measure things at this kind of size. So I'm just going to double check. Yep, these are kind of just a touch over 10 in places, or just under 10 there, where they've come off the saw. And then the other dimension should be fairly good. Yeah, that's a kind of, where are we on, 8.3 8 millimeters there. So they're ready to chuck, chuck back onto the sander to get them exactly eight by eight for those first two starter strips. But while I've got the table saw out, I'm gonna cut through the rest of these planks. For the rail strips that we're gonna be putting the bead on one side and the cove on the other of, um, I'm gonna cut them to about 12 and a half, 13 millimeters wide. And I find that to, for us is a really good dimension to finish so that when they stack up on the rail, they follow the curve, but they, we don't end up putting hundreds on. They get there pretty quickly. Um, so I'm gonna get into table sawing those. <laughs> Now we've finished with the table saw, we've got a nice bundle of rail strips here. There's quite a few of them. I'm hoping this will do probably more than two surfboards um, of rail strips, which would be nice. With the nice straight grain we selected, they've kind of, they do seem to have finished quite nicely, but I always like to double check the dimensions using our calipers again. We're looking at about, what's that, 12.7, 12.6. So yeah, there's a really nice, kind of nice size there for the next stage. The next thing we need to do is use our router table here to take these square strips to put a bead on one side. So I've set up the router piece that does exactly that. It's got a curve at six millimeters as a, as a round over. Um, so I'm gonna push the whole stack of rail strips through at that and then change the router piece over to the one that does the other side, that does the cove. So that's gonna take the, the notch out the bottom of the rail strips. Uh, I'm gonna have to spend a little bit of time with my headphones on because this one's a bit noisy. <laughs> With the rail strips having gone through the router to put the bead on them, as you can see. I've now changed the router bit over so that I can put the cove in the underside of them. But before I do that, I've pulled a couple of them aside because if you remember with the square starting rail strips, there's one next to them that needs a flat bottom. So I've kept them aside. The rest of them are all gonna be pushed through the router to make up the next load of rail strips.
There we have it then. That's how we make our rail strips. We have some square ones to start off, some with just a bead on the top to get us started, and then the rest have all got a bead and cove on so they nest into each other as they run from the nose to tail along a surfboard. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.